this is the carburetors off the ZR700. I am getting ready to um, soak them, simmer them in a solution, and then I'm going to put them in the soda blaster. This one I actually already, I actually already hit with the soda. Still seem like there's some slime and just you know dark spots, so I'm thinking that I'll clean it up good and then I'll in the solution and then be able to get um, get it in the soda blaster and hopefully get a lot of this corrosion off. So alright I'll be back. Alright so I got this stuff simmering in water and simple green. And I, unfortunately, I didn't have the concentrated, so I had to use the stuff out of the spray bottle, which is diluted. So we'll see how it works. Um, if it doesn't seem like it gets clean enough, then I'll probably end up just going to get another bottle of the Simple Green Concentrate and go from there. So, I think they cook about a half hour or so. They look pretty dark, but... One thing that I noticed is that it seems like it's just grime on there, so that's what came off. I don't know where that's coming from, I don't know what the heck that is, but I'm going to cool these off and and then uh, I think I'm just going to scrub them. Maybe I'll soak them in some like just warm dish soap water. And then that'll get all the exterior grime off there, whatever. And then um, I'll go ahead and put them in the oh, go ahead and put them in the soda blaster. All right, so it definitely does look like that's just grime on there. Look at that. Sweet. So this is gonna be some warm water, some Dawn dish soap. Get all that grime off there, let it soak for a little bit. This isn't real, this is just like lukewarm water, maybe 90 degrees. Just so let that soak up. All right, guys, so this is after taking them out of the mix and rinsing them off. I mean, they just look grimy still. So I'm hoping the soda blaster cleans them up. There's like a, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it was something left over in the the pot I used from when I cleaned the last ones. I don't know. I'm about to hit them in the soda blaster see what that does. Alright, so this is them after the soda blaster. Usually give them a rinse off just to make sure that uh, you know the powder all gets off them. You definitely want to make sure that they're dry before going in. Because otherwise any little water droplets get, you know, any of the soda on there. And it'll clog up real quick. Alright. And then I give them a quick rinse off in warm water and then uh, blow them dry again. All right, so this is them. They're all cleaned up. They're not perfect, but they look pretty good. These definitely got cleaner for sure. They still have like a dinginess to them, but you know, I mean, 95, 25 years old. But uh, these are the old um, uh, needle jets. There we go. AA8. Supposed to be an AA4. That one's an AA6. 
<laughs> so they weren't even matching. And the problem was they had put this engine in a 98 ZR 600 EFI chassis. And f I mean, obviously that had an electric fuel pump. Um, but what they did is they used a single quarter inch output, 31 liter per hour fuel pump. Well, these 95 700s actually came with, once I investigated it, they came with dual 31 liter per hour pumps. So I was noticing that there was, uh, you know, when I put it all back together and I took it out and I ran it, broke it in after the first, I think it was pretty much just after the first run, I came back inside, I checked the plugs, you know, I didn't, wasn't out very long, didn't do a whole lot, just, you know, kind of going through some revvings and um, RPM ranges and then um, brought it back, checked the plugs and one cylinder was running lean again. And that's the whole reason that this guy sold it. He said it started to burn down one, one uh, cylinder. One cylinder had like 126, I think. And the other cylinder had like 118 and it started to get a hole on the top of the piston. So that was his issue. And they tried to, they didn't, they didn't must not have either investigated it or realized it, that there were bigger pumps or dual pump setups. I'm guessing they didn't know because the only reason that I know is because I've screwed around with other, uh, repaired other snowmobiles. Uh, ZRT 800, for instance, has two fuel pumps and the, the triples, the big triples do for sure. So I investigated it, found out that it had two 31 liter per hour. So I went out and got a high flow 64 liter per hour and didn't have to deal with anything after that. So I'm guessing the reason that they use these bigger needle jets was to try and get more fuel to the engine when it just wasn't putting out enough, the pump at all. You know, I mean, for one, it had a quarter inch, a single quarter inch output, had a three, five sixteenths inch input, but only a single quarter inch output. So the one I got has uh, two quarter inch outputs and a five sixteenths inch input. So definitely did a lot better. So I'm gonna get these in there. It's got the right needles. Um, it was suggested that I put 35 pilots in there. I did that and it seemed like it was all right. The only one thing that I noticed that it seemed like it was pretty hard, like I had to pull it over. It would start like after the third or fourth pull but then I would have to keep giving it fuel, you know, I'd have to keep giving it throttle, even with the choke all the way on until it was warm enough to where I could let it go by itself. So I'm going to put the forties back in there. Um, and I got 400 pilots or 400 mains. I might go with four tens or four twenties. I think I got four twenties, so I might do that. I went down to the four hundreds, but you know what? Whatever. I mean, I was trying to, you know, increase my, fuel economy on this thing and the boys in Reed say you can go down one one main size and I figured you know if they're stock at 420 I drop it down um you know you can typically drop it down one main size from there or two main sizes I've heard so if stock was 420 and with Boyson in there you know they say you can drop it down one main so I figured you know 400 was a good main size to have in there Someone I've been, I've heard 390, but so I got, had the 400s in there and I didn't really, it seemed like if I ran it at wide open for a long time, it would start to get lean, but I got those pipes on there and those are a set of D and D dual pipes and can. So granted this thing came with dual pipes on it, a 95 ZR 700, but you know, and it's got dual pipes on there now, but they're D and D. So they are supposed to add about 12 horsepower. I think if I go up to 410s or 420s and I have the rest of this set up right to where it's, you know, it's got the right amount of fuel in the, you know, coming through the, the needle jets and the mains, you know, and I think I'll be, I think I'll be good because the, the other thing was that the 580 and 700 manual says that the needle clips are supposed to be in the fourth position. Well, that's richer. So I had them in the third position, but these were bigger. So I don't, you know, I'm still, I'm going to have to fiddle with it a little bit. I know I'm going to, but I'll get it figured out. 
Um, I still think that there's some electrical issues going on. Um, just an update. Um, a buddy of mine, we'll just refer to him as Don. Well, he pointed out that if these CDI boxes get cracks around here, around this little seal here, they can get moisture in there. So he said that what, and what I did is when I tested this up north last year for this whole situation, the CDI box I swapped it out with was cracked all the way around. Like, I mean, at least a sixth, I mean, it was a good 16th of an inch that was all separated and away. So it could very well be that the CDI box that I tried was also in the same condition that this one is. Cause this one had little tiny hairline cracks all the way around. So I cut all that out. My buddy Don said to put this in the oven, like at a hundred degrees, 110 degrees for two to three hours. And that'll bake all the heat out. It won't destroy anything, but just to keep an eye on it, you know, as far as the, the cords and or the, the wires and stuff. And that will bake all the moisture out and then to seal this back up with some epoxy. So that's what I'm going to do. I have... All right, gang, welcome back. Well, we got some parts in. Um, let's see here. Just going through... My little bags of jets here, trying to keep things organized. I got a few projects going on. Okay, so we got the springs here. These actually are quite a bit. I was talking to a friend of mine, and these compress so much that when you have them inside the carburetor, and then you're pulling up on these things all day, well, that can really wear your thumb out. So I asked him, I said, he's... He's very, very uh, versed in the snowmobile industry. We'll just say that. But I asked him if I'd cut a few of these springs off and I'd lighten the load a little bit and on the thumb. And he said, yeah, definitely. And it'll uh, definitely make it a lot snappier of a throttle. What I did get in the mail, emulsion tubes, or as they're better known, as needle jets. AA4s. Both of them. Well, let's check. Let's make sure they're both AA4s. Never know. Yep, we're good. $5 a piece. You know, I I really don't like to say this, but I mean, when you get stuff from online, you know, the big shops, four times as much per needle jet. So, you know, I mean, it's it's kind of hard not to acknowledge that you know what i'm saying so genuine arctic cat parts and accessories these are part number 6505 813 arctic cat piston valve these are three and a half cutaway and the cutaway is the distance that they are sh uh, sh shaved and angled so when you have this distance right there so that right there is, is the distance three and a half degrees you know if you go in a 360 360 degree angle i'm guessing that's three and a half degrees these were pretty beat up too but the Cutaway will determine how much airflow there is at certain stages. So I did get two of them here. So if you go and look at the manuals, they will give you a diagram of what affects what. And when I say what affects what, it's talking about your pilot jets, air needles, your main jets, jet needles, your needle jets, the throttle valve, and the cutaway, and it'll tell you what specific circuit or percentage of throttle it affects. This is my 95 ZR580 and ZR700 service manual, manual. and this is specifically for those two engines. Um, that's how I figured out that I was supposed to have three and a half cutaways instead of four. So this gives me the main jet charts. And it'll give you the ZR580 and the ZR700. 
I uh, had Boyson dual stage power reads in there, and they say that you can go, you can drop one main size, so that would bring me down to four tenths. So I decided that, based off of what everybody else said, is that 410 uh, I could drop down to without the new reeds in there, the boys and reeds. So I figured, hey, 400, that's probably, you know, where I'm going to settle. Well, I did that, and it's been fine, but I do have those D&D, &D, um, the D&D &D dual pipes on there, and the D&D &D dual pipes... They, you know, obviously when you put pipes on, it's going to, it allows you to increase the maximum RPMs. And so you typically would need to increase your main jet being that the fuel supply that you, that is going to be affected to be able to benefit from the pipes is going to be the wide open circuit. So you're going to have to increase your main jet size. So 420 to probably 440 would be um, suggested. They say, uh, most companies seem to say, well, at least a few that I've talked to, they seem to say two to three jet sizes bigger. Start off with two and go from there when you get pipes. So um, I have those pipes on there, but I don't ever take the thing up that, I don't ever wind it out that far. You know, I just go uh, trail riding, you know, with my family. So figured four to 400 would be fine for now. Um, I did notice that if I do wind out the RPMs, I got it up to about 90 a couple times. And it does seem like it starts to get a little too lean for me. So if I, but you know, there, here's the thing. It's got the stock needles. It had two different size jets. It had leaner cutaways because the cutaways were bigger. So it was a higher degree. Even granted, it's only three and a half to four, but that extra half a degree is going to create a leaner environment. And granted, they did have bigger tubes here, but I'm going to go ahead and put it all back to stock and start there. So that's the process that I'm at today. And I do have the stock uh, pilots here and your pilot jets for Arctic Cat, a lot of them. It's really hard to see. It's really super small numbers. You can barely see them right there. And there's a square with another square on the inside. And then it's a four and a zero. So it's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to put 40 pilots back in there. And that's where I'm at right now so I was going to go ahead and start assembling these and you'll notice that there's a cutaway on these you want the air to be flowing over it like this so when it flows over it creates a venturi effect and essentially it you know when the needles up high enough that was the other thing is the needles were set wrong too so when the needles up high enough you start getting fuel coming out of here and the, the air flowing over, it creates a negative pressure on the inside of this tube. And then the main jet is screwed into there. And it'll draw fuel, only so much fuel up through the main jet. I'm tempted to just go ahead and put the 420s back in there. Just say the heck with it for now. I think I'm going to do that. And then I'll fiddle with it later. I was thinking about going to 410s. Well, I got the 410s in my 800. <laughs> so... If, I mean, you, this this uh, manual is awesome. You can go in and test pretty much everything in here. When you look at the parts diagram, you can see the tube right there is number six. And you can see how it's got that cutaway. So you want to make sure the cutaway, which is that side, the open portion, is facing the engine. I'm going to go ahead and put the 420s in here for now. You don't want to give these too much of a tweak. Just enough to where they're tight. You don't want them vibrating out either. Um, I also checked the float valve on these. Made sure they were both correct. These 
float valve arms were, they were bent. And they didn't seem like they were sitting properly. So what you want to do uh, for these in the manual, it says 21 to 23 millimeters. And the millimeter is from, so it's this lip right here to the arm. And then all you do is you just put it at 21 and then you just compare. Make sure it's set right. And I already preset these, so if you need to raise it, you can push this tab down. There we go. Okay, so that tab there, right there. You can push it down or bend it back up, and that will adjust your float valve height. So I did that on both of them. They're both set to, I think, to right around 22, 23. All right, so I am going to go ahead and put these 40s in. Okay, and then these just pop right in here. Just drop it down there. I always wipe off my screwdriver. And then I'll bat. What I'll do is I'll... See if you guys can hear it. When you unscrew it, you can hear the threads like pop right there. That. That's how you know that your threads are set. And then you can go ahead and screw it in. And once it snugs up, just give it a little tweak and you're good. It's that simple. So I got the main jet, I have the needle jet, I have the pilot jet. I already put in the, the needle valves, the fuel inlet valves, and then I set the float arms. Now you have the idle valve, or the idle screw, and this really all this does is just push on this spot right here and the more you push it in the more it'll the more it'll raise the valve so it's like this that's all it does it's pretty simple just screw that in there and then you have the these are the pilot needles and you know you can choose to clean these up. These were already pretty clean when I put them in there. So these, some of them have O-rings that go around here. So I'll make sure that you account for those. I know my Honda dirt bike is an O-ring and a washer, but on these there is not. And this is the front of the carburetor. This is the bell where the air enters. And this is where that little guy goes. And you screw it all the way until it's lightly seated. You know, you're not, you know, I'm just barely twisting it. That's where it sits right there. And then you back it out half, one, and a half turns. That's how you set it. I had 35s in there. Someone recommended that I put 35s in there, and I did. And you know what? It's, once it warmed up, but I don't fine, but it, I had to start it and then hold the throttle open. I don't want to have to do that anymore. When I clean these, I'll just stick the end of the little hose there and then just give it a couple squirts. And then I'll also do it from the bottom side. It's a little bit bigger hole. I'll shoot it out of them holes. And then you just take compressed air and <laughs> make funny noises. Okay, so then I have 35s and 50s. That's my 40. So I'll just go ahead and put this in here. 
Like I said, you just drop it in there. Then you can hear it. There it is. I'll do it one more time. There it is. And like I said, you just give it a... See? That's where it stopped. Right there. You just do it. That's it. And then you just give it a... A little bit of a tweak. Snug it up, and you're good. All right. Should just drop her in there. There it is. And then you just want to stick your finger in there, hold it. And then once again, you got the little screw. I like to put a little tiny bit of grease on the threads of these. They spin a lot easier. Cause you get some, man, they're just so corroded that, I mean, you got to get in there with pliers. You're better off just taking the whole carburetor out, cleaning it. You can even run a little tap through there, clean it up real good. Same thing with these threads. These already have grease on them. And then when you clean it out, you want to blow in every one of these holes. Your choke. Even your vent tubes. <laughs> Whoops. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to blow all your carburetor parts off the table. The bench. The wake bench. Seat it, lightly seat it. Right there, that's seated. Half, one, and a half. Let's account for everything. Two needles. Oh, it's right on. Do not want to lose these washers. These washers, and they're just, they're more like spacers. They are little plastic spacers that go on top. They go above and below the needle circlip for proper spacing. Now, if you really want to dial in your jetting, which some people do, especially for the drag racers, what they do is they will get half thickness shims. I mean, these are washers. These are already super thin. Take the calipers to them. Point seven six of a millimeter. That's how thick those are. So you can get them half that. So you're looking at thirty half a seventy is thirty five, half a six is three. So you're looking at thirty eight point thirty eight of a millimeter that you can get. Okay, and the other thing is that you know what? I, I bet if I had tubes that were both six. It might not be a bad idea, but they were mismatched. The manual says to run these in the fourth clip. I mean, they're easy enough to change, so I'm just going to go ahead and run them in the third clip for now. Um, everybody says that, you know, they, they will set that too rich from the factory. Can't set the idle screw until you actually... Get it on the sled. I mean, well, a lot of people say you can give it a quick eyeball, and I think they said like an eighth of an inch, or yeah, like a, you take an eighth inch drill bit, and what you'll do is you'll just set the height using an eighth inch drill bit. And if there are any burrs on these, you want to make sure you get those off so you don't scar these. Okay, so what you do, grab yourself an eighth inch drill bit, and you can slide.
slide these. Now you'll see that there's a slot on this side and there's a little bump here. Well, you want to line that up because there's on the inside, there's a little notch. Probably easier to see on this side. You can barely see it right there. It's right down there. So it lines up with this. So when you put these in, you want to make sure that they're lined up right. Okay, so this is what I was talking about as far as the cutaway. Down the bigger ones, this will be open a half a degree more. Well, that's going to let more air in. So to set these, what you want to do, there we go, look at that. Gotta love it, technology. So you just set that there, and you screw this in. I don't know how much I trust that. See how it's lowering? What I should do, I should put a little bit of grease on the end of this. On the end of that guy. It's not gonna hurt anything. I wouldn't think so, at least. Just a little dab. <laughs> like Bob Ross. There. Just like that. Some people say... I'm not sure. I'm gonna, let's try this. I've heard you can start with a certain amount of turns out. So you just go ahead and seat it to where it stops again. Right there. Let's see. One... That's a whole half, that's a one, half, two, half, three, half, four. That looks awfully small. But, you know, it's going through the, that's four, and a half. Let's go with four. What you'll want to watch for too, which I had to do on here, you'll get little burrs just over time, especially when you get a used sled. There'll be little burrs right here. And so you'll want to just file them off real smooth. You don't want to scuff these up as you're, you file them and then you use a little bit of sandpaper, fine cut sandpaper. So once again, you want to line up that slot with the pin. So let's get this out. Put a little dab of grease on it. So a four turns out. Let's match it. So we'll go ahead and screw it all the way in. Lightly seated. There it is. And I'll go half, one, half, two, half, three, half, four. Just a little hair. In order, place a washer, plate, washer, and inlet seat into position and tighten. Install the inlet needle valve and secure with a retainer. It's a picture of that. You got washer, plate, washer, valve, needle, and retainer. Needle jet AA-4 for the ZR700, that's what we have. And then the jet needle... 7DJ2-3. Wait a minute. Okay, so it is supposed to be in 3. I was getting 4. Where's that chart at? Where did I see that position 4? 700. Operating ZR at high altitude requires falling carburetor changes. 4,000, 8,000 feet. Install Z9 needle jets. 8,000 feet and above. Needle jets part number. Operating above floors and... Circle up to the third. 
Operating above 4,000 feet requires raising the jet needle circlip to the third position. That's for the 700. That must be a typo. I bet that's why I thought that. Because you're putting in a different needle jet. I mean, it does. Oh, I mean, that's got to be a typo because it makes it seem like it's in the fourth position. Well, raise it to the third position. Okay. But then you go back here to the beginning and it says third. So we're good. You want to place boring on top or a washer on it. Slip it down in there like that. I really don't like the fact that they used Phillips screws. But, you know what, they don't really have to be tightened very much, but it seems like every one that I've ever taken out, I've had to use an impact driver. So let alone having one of these on, or below, you want one on the top as well. Just like that. Just drop it in, making sure they're all still in place. And once again, unscrew it until you hear it pop, just like that. And that's how you know that you're lined up with your threads. You don't have to crank these doggone things down that hard. Just snug them. That's it. That way they're easy to remove. Get the other spacers, nylon spacers. And drop this one in here. Oh, see. Probably be better just to stick it in like that. That way it doesn't drop. Yeah, these screws can get rusted in. Just like everything, you gotta be careful. Make sure you're lined up. Do the same thing. There you go. Lined up. There you go. I'm just going to go ahead and this is low temp grease as well. This stuff's awesome. AM Soil. Synthetic water resistant grease, marine power sports and trailers. There you go, right there, baby. Trailers, all outboard motors, snowmobiles, ATVs, automobile boat lifts, UTVs, off-road trucks, equipment. It says, Provides superior performance for applications subjected to extreme water contamination, including vehicle and trailer wheel bearings, including body bearings, chassis, drive shafts and splines, U-joints, ball joints, tie rod ends, steering linkages, and other greasable bearings and components. Designed specifically for wet applications, excellent corrosion control, even in salt water. Very important, boys, because... You know, if you, if you, especially if you're out in the country, but even if you're on trails, you do cross over roads that have salt. So that gets up on your sled. Long lasting bearing, shaft, and chassis protection helps seal out contaminants. Compatible with lithium complex greases. I thought it was on the label somewhere. Maybe it's on the website. It's good down to like, gosh, like minus 45 degrees or something like that. So it's good stuff. You want to make sure that needle's lined up in there. Those blasted needles. And one thing I found, when these are on the sled, and if you're trying to line these up, if you have it right here and then twist it this way it will raise up a little bit and then drop right into play right into place so go ahead and button these up I would like to fill these with fuel you can either fill them with fuel 
fill the bowls with fuel or you can put the bottoms on and then squirt fuel into here and what that does is that puts fuel into your bowl so you're not trying to pull your sled over a thousand times before you get fuel in there so it's either that or you put your you undo your gas cap, put your mouth around the lid, and blow. <laughs> and it's a little bit more difficult with the bigger, wider uh, Felnex, but it's possible. And you just want to get a good pressure for you know ten seconds, which you can take a deep breath, pressurize it, and then seal it off, and then just hold it. Now pressurize it enough to where it'll push fuel in there. You do that three times in a row and you're typically good. Or if you have the capability, you can use compressed air. Not too much though. You don't want to go crazy. So we're getting close. Another thing that we can do is clip these, these guys here. So we're going to go four. So if we start here, opposite of the, we could even stand on the same side. So if we just clip one, two, three, four. I think if we did clip it there on five. Yeah, let's clip it there. Four, five. Let's get a good bite on it. Oh, there we go. We'll do the same thing on this side. Clip off this ugly end. One, two, three, four, five. So what we want to do is try and flatten this out. There we go, it should be fine. Definitely seems easier. That should do the trick. Obviously, there's other parts that need to be in here. I think that's going to be it for the moment. So this is my CDI box. This goes on the ZR580, I believe a 550, um, 650, and 700. And the part number is 3004-099. And these can dry out around here. And the seal will break apart and allow moisture to get in there. I'm hoping that's what my problem is because I'm seems like I'm still experiencing some type of spark issue. Definitely, it's definitely spark. So I'm gonna try and figure out what it is. I don't know if it's a CDI box. I got the stator rewound. I've tried four different stators in this thing, and I've tried uh, the original coil pack. Tested bad, so I bought an SPI. Ran that for a while, up and ended up getting a spot chewed through because of another, I think it was because of the Speedo cable under the hood was sitting on it and it just kept rubbing it, vibrating it through. So it deteriorated, I cut that off and had to run it. It's So I get it back here and start messing with it, the, the, you know, again this uh, fall and it's giving me issues. So I put another coil pack on there, a brand spanking new SPI, and the spark's a little better, but it's still a little weak. So I'm hoping that it's this, because this was cracked all the way around. And this was brought to my attention by a buddy of mine, uh, Don. Really good guy. Um, so he recommended that I check that. Well, when I was up north last year and I went and swapped out parts, I swapped out a coil, it still did the same thing. This is with the, the new rewound stator on it. And the stator test perfect. Switched out the coil with a used coil from somebody's garage up there. Still did the same thing. Put my old coil back in and then put a different CDI box. But the CDI box they had, the only one that they had on hand that we knew of, was cracked all the way around. 
So I ended up cutting off all the, the cracked stuff and then I put it in the oven on the lowest setting, which is 170 degrees, and I cooked it for three hours. Tried to get the moisture out and then I let it cool and then I put some epoxy around here. And it's good to go at this point, so it's going to be tested. So that's where we're at at this point, folks. So the next step, I'm just going to go ahead and fill these with fuel. Just gently put these in the vise. two-stroke gas can of shake don't really need a whole lot It just keeps it down. It's amazing how hard that plastic gets. Just from the ethanol. Soaks it up, turns it into a corn kernel basically. You don't want to clamp it down real tight, just enough to hold it steady while you screw it together. Personally, I think socket heads would probably be better. You know, Alan. just like that so our four turns out that guy's good tucked in there okay there's one gotta have floats kerplunk These screws have lock washers on them. Yeah, I'm reusing the bowl gaskets. Just have to watch and make sure they don't leak. Just use your general run of the mill zip ties. There you go. They are good for minus 40 and up to 185 degrees. I think that's pretty good. Minimum installation temperature is 14. So obviously, if it's below that, it'll probably snap. Because you want to make sure you got a little bit of flex in there. Okay, that's that. That is L number two. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just brush on a little a little bit of 
premix fuel, and that will help to lubricate the slide. I'll help to get any contamination out of there. So the fuel evaporates and you, you got oil left over. Same thing for this one. I'm gonna make sure you got your rubber seals. And what I've done before, you can take a tiny bit of grease. Swipe it on the inside lip here. That will help the rubber gasket to stay just like that. So again, just put some fuel on the inside here. Seems good to me. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to lubricate is this hole here. This stuff's really good. Although this can's almost done. This is the choke hole here. That is to help prevent the holes from drying up. I mean, if you're using it on a regular basis, it's not. But every little bit helps to maintain stuff.